Hey, what's up guys, this is Mario, back again with another trade video. I'm very, very excited today. Um, a lot has to do with the election. Uh, the market's also very, very excited. It's been moving a lot and it's very, very bullish. Finally, a definitely big turnaround since the last a couple of weeks of volatility. Uh, and I'm gonna go over some of the sectors that are moving and uh, the trade that I made today. I did trade uh, NEO. I uh, was looking for a uh, first red day um, and it didn't go as well as I, I was looking for, but I'm gonna talk about that trade. Uh, but also the overall sector, FXI, the uh, Chinese iShares large cap ETF has been moving a lot and NEO has been moving with it. And there's a reason why a lot of, has, a lot of that has to do with the, uh, the election. So I'm gonna go over that really quickly. I'm gonna go over my trade. Uh, don't forget to smash that like button if you learned something in this video and also subscribe to this channel. Let's get started. Let me share my screen really quick. All right, let's get started. All right, let's go. So first of all, I want to just kind of cover the market really quickly because it's so important. Now, this this day right here, this is uh, pretty much Tuesday, okay? So the market jumped because we finally had a better picture of who was going to win. Uh, the uncertainties of, of the election was starting to kind of go down. Once uh, the uh, uh, votes started to come in in different states, and it kind of looked like uh, Biden had a leak. Um, now, Wednesday, once we did see that Biden had a, a huge lead, especially when they, they, the, uh, Biden looked like they won Wisconsin, Arizona, um, and, and Nevada was looking also really good, uh, there was huge jumps. So it kind of eliminated, eliminated a lot of the uh, uncertainty in the market regarding the, the election. Now, what else moved with it? So one of the ETFs or, or sectors that was moving uh, was actually that Chinese FXI large cap ETF. This is an iShares ETF by BlackRock. So look at Wednesday, huge move, huge move in uh, this uh, Chinese ETF. So this represents large caps uh, and, and Chinese large caps. So anything, uh, any, any sort of company ADR um, in, in the uh, China that is based in China, like Neo, the electric electronic uh, uh, electric vehicle car, uh, Neo is one of them. Uh, but also Baba, uh, and then there's also like other solar companies also involved with this. So those jump huge. So of course, uh, the reason why um, the elections are bullish for China is because uh, now that if Biden takes office, uh, the China the China Chinese trade war may end, or they might change the agreements where uh, there's more of a compromise and less of this harsh you know trade agreement trade war that's been happening in the last couple of months so that is very very favorable for china so now let's uh now i did trade a new and a lot of a lot of it had to be because of this move you know the whole chinese uh, uh sector was moving uh etf and, and all the least large uh, chinese companies were moving so that included neo neo is a, a um, electric vehicle company in china one of the biggest ones and most successful ones uh, and they've actually kind of moved very, very fast. Um, and it was already um, started to get uh, overextended. We had a huge move on Wednesday, uh, you know, actually on, uh, yeah, Thursday, excuse me. And again, a lot of it had to do with uh, what was happening with the elections and how Biden looked like he was taking the lead and things were looking really good. So we had big moves in NEO and NEO started to get overextended. Uh, again, I look at the Bollinger Bands to kind of, determine if uh, stock is overextended. And also I do look at the uh, stochastics. So above 80, that's overextended and it's breaking above these, uh, the uh, bullard demands right here. So on Thursday, it had a humongous move, pretty much, almost pretty much went parabolic. And then it started to kind of, um, it literally sold off pre-market. So to me, this looked like an exhausting move exhaustion type of move, you know, literally sold off and it started and it kind of pulled back. So when red pre-market, it bounced back up green and went red uh, at the open and it bounced back up. So there was a lot of volatility in that and I decided to trade that move. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to cover uh, my, my trade, but also I'm going to look into statistics and I'm also going to look into standard deviation and options and how Actually, now that I, I've been learning more about options, I'm now considering options uh, as an additional layer uh, of uh, information to base my trades on. 
And so far, the options implied volatility, the options of ranges um, really actually make a lot of sense and they actually do help. And I'm gonna explain to you that in a little bit. So I'm gonna go over the trade and how I usually make trades without using the implied volatility or the option ranges and the, uh, and the standard deviation. So I'm gonna go over the trade and how I traded it, but I did add the, uh, the, the ranges of the implied volatility. Uh, so um, in, in the charts, you kind of see how it played out. And it was very, very interesting to what I saw. And I'm gonna continue to use this, but let, let's kind of get started. So my thought process, of course, again, Yesterday, we had a humongous move on NEO, again, because the whole sector, the whole Chinese uh, large cast, were, again, all related to the, uh, to the uh, what we call it, the, um, um, uh, the elections. So today, I was looking for first red day. Again, huge, huge moves. Even uh, actually after hours, it continued to, to kind of move out. But then it literally sold off. It sold off pre-market, and it looked like there was kind of like a sell-off, you know, like a this exhaustion move, and it, it, and I felt like, you know what, this can tell me, give me a little signal that, hey, you know, it might actually end up red. It might actually end up being down, I don't know, 5% or 10%, who knows? So when I saw this huge move pre-market, it bounced back up. It, it kind of, at the open, it kind of sold off, but it literally just kind of parabolic at the open. It went green, and it went back red, so this line right here, this um, blue line, is actually a uh, the previous day close. So when it's above that, it's it's considered uh, green, and when it's below that, it's considered red. So it means the, the the stock actually is if it's above that, it means the stock is actually up. You know, one percent, two percent, whatever. When it's down, is actually down, down one percent, two percent for the day, etc. So I just wanted to quickly explain that. But there was a lot of volatility. So the reason why I decided to actually start shorting here is because. I've noticed another uh, another uh, first red days that when the, the when when I'm looking at an exhaustion type of stock that's going to go first red day, and I see a a weak open going uh, going uh, going going red pre market, and then trapping some shorts at the open, and then going green, and then pulling back down. I usually do see a literally a continuous sell off, you know, all day. And this this type of uh, this type of setup I saw it in in in, in Snap actually uh, a couple of days ago, um, you know. So I did see this, and I also saw it. I believe was it uh, JKS? I believe. So I felt like you know what, if it breaks these these lows and it breaks this trend, um, I think it could continue to sell off, you know. So here's the trend, the uptrend. And it broke the lows of the day and they literally broke this upper, upper trend. And I felt like, you know what, we're probably going to pull back, maybe touch S1, et cetera, or even maybe break below, consolidate a little bit and then touch S1. So I, could, I was actually thinking about adding. So my, my initial position was actually kind of small. So nothing big, uh, just in case you guys didn't know. So it was a starter. And my risk was like, okay, so if it breaks above VWAP, I'm getting the heck out of there, you know? So you know, if it reclaims VWAP, I'm out, you know? So that's pretty much what it did. So I wanted to give it some time. You know, I felt like, you know what, maybe we could pull back. We could test VWAP, the VWAP, which is the volume weighted average price of, of, of the chart and maybe push down again. But it actually continued to trend up. And I, it, and it was already kind of like testing these this important level. There's a, 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 a yesterday's a previous close. So I felt, you know what, this could be a resistance. It could, it could pretty much test this. And then kind of pull back and start trending, trending down again. Uh, so I did decided to short again. And I felt, you know what? If it breaks below this 42 key level, I think we're going to continue downtrend and maybe uh, maybe make new lows. So I did add to that to that, but I did I did decide to have a tight stop. So if it breaks below uh, this range and it goes green again, I'm out. So so and it access that's what it did. It went it went green. I took half. And it looked like uh, this, after this candle, it looked like it held, and I took the rest. I was, I was out. So that was a very, very tight risk. Um, and again, one of the most important things of becoming a successful trader is you have to really limit your, lo your, your losses. You have to cut your losses as much as possible. And when, when the price action is not moving uh, what, exactly what you expected, you got to get out. Get out as soon as possible. Start cutting your trade right away. And that's how you're able to cut your losses right away and limit your, your, your risk and your losses. Uh, so it did spike up and it hit 43. 
So very interested in why I decided to short at, at 43. You know, again, I take, did take two losses here, took one loss in this move right here, took another loss in here. Again, both small losses, all, be, all based on my, my risk. And then decided to short again. Now, the reason why I decided to short again was because this 43 low was a very, very important level. Uh, not only at the open, but also at the pre-market. You see that? 43, very important level. So I felt that, you know what? I think this could be the top. You know, I think this could be the top. You know, it, 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 it went there. I also noticed the market was also kind of topping out because the market literally did a similar move as, as Neo. It kind of, it, it kind of like, you know, closed up the open week and literally squeezed out and it was already kind of testing this area. So I felt that was going to be a top and we might actually pull back. Uh, and I really felt that Neo was going to pull back. So, so I decided to kind of short. So I did short again and it started, this started a downtrend. So I was correct. So I started to pretty much exit my position. I shorted 43. Took some profits here at the opening line. Uh, took some more profits at 42, another line. Uh, took some more profits here at the VWAP and took some more profits here at the, uh, pretty much at the midpoint area. And I was actually looking forward to take more profits below this area, maybe at 40, at 40, 50, or even 40, 77, or 40, 40 50 is probably would have been a better. So I pretty much uh, put a stop if it broke above uh, 40, 41, 50. And, and the rest of the shares. So by this time, I pretty much had a very small amount of shares. So when I when it stopped out, uh, it was pretty much not a big deal. So this was a really uh, nice trade in my part uh, because I did take two losses here. Uh, now just, just to let you know, guys, I did lose in this trade, but getting the opportunity to short at this high level and understanding what was happening overall in the bigger picture of the chart, allow me to mitigate my losses and lower them to even, even, even lower. So even, even though I did lose in this trade, I actually was able to lower that risk and lower that, that the loss uh, to almost like a scratch trade. So to me, I was happy about that because again, overall, the bigger picture of this trade, there's a huge potential that Neo could kind of pull back to 35. So, you know, risking a dollar or two dollars to make like five bucks, that's a five to one risk reward. That's huge, you know? So it was totally, totally worth it, you know, shorting here. Uh, even shorting here, but again, it didn't really work as well as I thought, but even though it didn't work as well as, well as I thought, I was still able to, to uh, trade again, you know, at a, a really good level and mitigate, mitigate my losses um, on the way down when it did pull back um, during zombie hour. So one actually one cool thing that I want to mention is that this move was before zombie hour. So this squeeze happened before zombie hour. And I've noticed that moves tend to happen one hour before the market. So look at this huge move right here. And zombie hour tends to reverse whatever that first trend was. So this move up and then reverse after zombie hour. Zombie hour is after the first hour of the market opened. So that was nice. So I took advantage of the zombie hour to kind of, you know, cut my losses. I could have gone bigger, but I'm like, yeah, I already kind of lost twice. I don't want to lose three times just in case because I had a really, really tight uh, risk. If it breaks uh, to all time highs at 430, you know, that would have been my third loss. But, you know, I, I was smart enough to, to kind of just take it easy. Hey, you know, if I could lower, lower my cause, I'm cool with that, you know. So I did lower my loss. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. Uh, but I want to go over now um, standard deviation and implied volatility because I noticed now that, that I've been studying options and, and how they work is how important those things are. Um, now, I'm gonna go in the trade tab to kind of show you guys. Now, here uh, I'm looking at the November 6th uh, weekly options. So they expired actually today. And at the open, the implied volatility was actually uh, 100% with a range of like one point something. Uh, I believe it was probably even more. So let me see if I could. Uh, I think I did take a picture of it, um, and I do have it here somewhere. Uh, did it, did it, did it, did it. Okay, here. Um, I guess I cannot find it. Uh, oh, well, guys. So I did take a picture of it. I can't find it. But anyways, when the market opened, actually, you know what? No, nah, never mind. 
So when, it, when the market did open, uh, again, the implied volatility was around 100% and the range was like a 1.2, uh, 1.4. So based on yesterday's close, the range was, was from here to here, this difference, and from here to here. So plus minus one something, minus one point something. So that was a range of implied volatility. And just look at the chart and how well the price action followed that. Even though it kind of went below that here, it literally bounced off the, the, the first S1 and it literally, you know, parabolic all way up. And when it and, and when the market opened and it pulled back, it literally kind of like tested that level again and it bounced back. So even though it broke, broke below that, you know, it kind of stayed within that range, you know, an implied volatility range. So that is something I, I started to notice. And it's not the first time I noticed that. I've noticed that before. Um, and now I'm going to add that as an additional layer of, um, you could say, uh, a study so I can be informed and make better trading decisions. So um, that is something to, to make, to kind of just be aware. Now looking at next week's weekly, November 13th. So this, this option right here expires November 13th. Uh, again, seven days to expire. Look at the implied volatility is 107%. So the probability is uh, that's a, there's 107 there's 107, almost 108% probability that NEO is going to go up 5.16 uh, points or down 5.16 points. The probabilities are that it's going to go down five points, you know? So I really think looking at this chart, this to me is an exhaustion type of move right here. You know, so I think the, the uh, first red day is going to happen. Even though it did close red, I think the bigger move of down $5 is, is gonna happen uh, on Monday. Just looking at how the price section is. Now, again, implied, implied volatility says that it, it could also go up $5. So that could also happen. So that's where, uh, as a trader, you have to have use your skill set to kind of understand price action and use your levels uh, to make sure that, you know, you don't get squeezed out. So, because um, implied volatility could, it also says it could go up $5. So, uh, so, that's pretty much it guys. Um, just wanted to share this video. Uh, again, I am going to start to add more of the options implied volatility in, in my training because I've noticed, again, this is not the first time I noticed that. Uh, cause I know, um, a lot of people that, that, that I do talk and track are options traders. Now I have traded options before, not with live money, but I have paper traded options before. Uh, and I am learning more about it. Uh, but since I've been trading equities for such a long time, I feel like that's my niche. I know it very well. Uh, but now what I want to do is kind of use my knowledge and options and apply volatility and use those ranges to kind of give me uh, another layer, another study of understanding, you know, hey, where are my probabilities? You know, where is the best time to kind of get in? Where is the best time to kind of size in or, or, or manage my risk better? Uh, and overall, I really believe that's going to help me uh, become a better trader. And hopefully it'll be help you become a better trader too, understanding this, how this works. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys learned something from this video. Don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe to this channel if you find any value. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.